Hello! Welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you how you can make these cool feather daggers for your Xaya cosplay. And we are using Black Warbla for this. For this particular project I chose to use Black Warbla. And if you want to try it too, I will link it in the comments below so you can also find Warbla and make something awesome for your own cosplay. If you want to see how I made the whole Xaya cosplay, so also the dress and No. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you want to see how I made the whole Xaya cosplay, so not only the props, but also the dress and the belt and the wig and the cape, then be sure to check out my website. And there you can also download the pattern set where there is a blueprint for these feathers and also many other parts of the costume. Go away, go away, go away. <laughs> In this video, I'm not only showing you how to create these feathers with Warbla, but I'm also going to show you how you can prime and paint them so they will be fully functional for your cosplay. So if you're excited to see that, keep watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and also, of course, give a thumbs up to this video. And let's start the video. I start by taking my pattern. This is the one that I drew on a piece of paper. But you can also download a much more beautiful one. If you go to my website, there you can find the pattern pack from Xaya. And it doesn't only contain the pattern for the feather daggers, but also for the cape and the hood. Okay, now let's start crafting. First, I cut the feather shape out of two millimeter thick craft foam. Then I take some black warbler, which is a thermoplastic, and I cut two pieces of it that are slightly bigger than my feather shape. As you can see, I left about 1-2 cm around the edges of the feather. To be able to work with the warbler, you need to heat it up. For this I use my heat gun, and I set it on a temperature of 330 degrees Celsius. The warbler needs to be about 70 degrees before it is workable. Then I put my foam feather onto one of the warbler pieces. And then I put the other warbler piece on top of that. When warbler is hot, the adhesive that's inside it will get active and the warbler will actually stick to itself. That makes it possible to capture the foam inside the two layers of warbler. With the warbler still hot, I press it down around the edges to really make the foam snug and tight inside of the warbler. I make sure to really get into the nooks and crannies on the sides of the feather. And to make this even sharper, I also like to use a wooden clay modeling tool, like you see me using here. I will actually link where you can buy them in the description below. Okay, now we can cut out the feather around the edges. If the warbler had cooled down already, I would heat it up again using my heat gun because it needs to be a little bit soft in order to cut it with my scissors. I use a sturdy pair of scissors and cut neatly around the edge of the feather. I make sure not to cut away too much because then the foam will get out again and also not to cut away too little because that will result in ugly edges. Of course our feather doesn't really look like a feather yet so I'm going to use the pair of scissors again to cut away the little triangles on the edges. As you can see, it already looks more like a feather. And again, whenever the warbler cools down again and gets hard, then I will heat up the warbler again so I can cut it. Now the edges are really sharp, so I want to make them a little bit more softer. For this, I'm using the help of my wooden clay modeling tool. Now I want to mark some lines on the feather to know where I want to add some details later. To do this I'm using a white paint marker. Okay. 
Then I heat up my warbler again to get it soft and workable again. And with another clay modeling tool, I now carve some lines into the warbler to really make it look like a feather. When warbler cools down, it will get hard again. So you can't make these shapes when the warbler is cool. That's why you need to heat it up again in between working. Just keep adding more lines and more lines until I like the final look. To make some lines more deeper than others, I just use a little bit more pressure on the clay modeling tool. And then it looks a little bit like this. As you can see, the texture is really feather-like. And I do this on both sides of the feather. We still need a thin raised line in the middle of the feather to make it look more realistic. To do this, I actually use scraps of warbler. This is a double layer of warbler that I actually cut off around the edges of the feather earlier. And now I have a nice thin line. I need to heat up the line and also the feather to make both pieces of warbler sticky. It's very important that you heat up both the surface that you want to stick it to and the piece that you want to stick to it, because otherwise it can fall off. So it's really important that you heat up both pieces. Then I just press the line onto the feather and use some pressure to really stick it on. I smooth out the edges a little bit to make it look even more neat. For this I use my clay modeling tool and also just my fingers. And the other side of the feather still needs this line. And then it's mostly done. But of course we don't want to leave it black, we want some color. So to prime it first I'm using PVA primer from Mink. And I'm using a little lid from a yogurt cup as a holder for the primer. To prime it I'm using a makeup brush because this one is really soft. And the short handle is really nice to hold. So it's really easy to work with it. Because the hairs are so soft, you don't see brush strokes on the final result. And I really like that. I really like to use this primer, the PVA primer, because it gives a really nice and smooth surface to the warbler. Because warbler is not fully smooth from itself, you need a little bit of primer to make the surface a lot smoother. However, black warbler is already smoother than brown warbler, so it doesn't need a lot of layers of primer. Two layers are mostly enough. After the first layer of primer is dry, it looks like this. So it's already kind of smooth. But I want it to be even smoother. So for the next layer, I'm going to paint another layer of PVA primer. I'm using the same brush and I'm just going over it with the primer again. To make sure that this primer, the surface will level and make an even more smooth result. Yeah, I'm keeping saying the word smooth a lot of times. But to do that, I'm actually using a little bit of water, put it on my finger and make rotating movements over the wet primer. This makes the last layer of primer even more smooth. If you don't want to use your fingers, you can also dip your brush in the water or just mix some water into the primer for the second layer. When the whole layer of primer is on, it looks like this. And after it has dried, it looks like this. Well, this one is still a little bit wet, as you can see on the white spots. When it dries, it's fully translucent, as you can see on the other feather. To actually paint the feather with color, I'm using acrylic paint from the brand Amsterdam. But of course you can use any brand that you want. But this brand has a lot of shades, so I really like it. So then I'm using actually the same brush that I used for the priming. And I'm just putting a little bit of paint on the brush and brushing it over the whole feather to get a really nice dark purple base color. Of course, I will also repeat this for the back of the feather, so the whole feather has a purple color. 
it actually dries a little bit darker. So now it looks a little bit bright, but it will be super dark purple when it dries. Then to add some highlights, I'm mixing some lighter purple. And I'm using a smaller brush so I can do a little bit of dry brushing. Dry brushing means that your brush is not really wet. You only take a little bit of paint onto the brush and then you go over the project to leave a little bit of paint on it. If you do that in multiple layers and then every layer take a lighter color, here I'm using light pink for example for the edges, then you can get really nice gradients on your work. In this case I wanted a gradient of dark purple on the inside to light pink on the outside of the feather. To make this gradient even more obvious, I use some black oil paint to paint a shadow on the center of the feather. Oil paint dries really slow, so it's a really nice paint to make nice gradient shadows with. You really have a lot of time to do a lot of blending with the paint. In this case I'm using a smaller brush, so I can really make a nice small gradient. That was just the finishing touch that I needed for my feather. Of course I repeat this on the other side as well. I didn't film this, but after I painted the whole feather, I also spray painted the whole thing with acrylic varnish that protects it against the weather. I chose to use a satin finish varnish that's not too shiny and also not too matte. It actually looked just perfect. And then the feathers were done. I made a total of three for my cosplay. I think the feathers turned out really beautiful and they really complement and finish my cosplay outfit. Yep, Xaya is complete. So that's how you make some cool warbler feathers for Xaya cosplay. And I also have a video about how I made the skull for the shoulder for Xaya. So if you want to see that one, I will link it down below and also put it in the cards here. <laughs> so you can keep watching if you want. And of course, if you want to learn more about working with warbler, then you can get my book. You can get it in my webshop, it's also available as an ebook, so you can download it immediately and it has lots of information about especially making details with Warbler because that's the thing that I love doing the most. So I hope you liked seeing this video and seeing how we made the feathers for Xaya and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!